Let us now look at this question. Study of tissues is called histology, cytology, embryology, or is it morphology? Well, very simple question, and I'm sure you already know the answer. I'm sure all of you have already marked the answer. Study of tissues, the structure, everything about the tissues is called as histology. Okay, so A is the right answer. Now, what are tissues? Tissues are nothing but a group of cells, right, which have the similar structure. They may have the similar structure or they may differ from one another, but invariably they are performing the same function. They'll probably have the same origin also. So, a group of cells performing the same function is called as a tissue. Now, the study of cell. Now, we know what is cell. What is cell? It is a basic fundamental unit of life. The study of cell is called as cytology. So, cytology is the wrong option. Now, what do, you, what do you think is embryology? Embryology is nothing but the branch which studies the development of what? Of an embryo. Okay, so that is embryology. So, it does not deal with the study of tissues. And morphology. Okay, I'm going to give you a clue about morphology. I can say that the mango tree is about its tall it is, the stem is broad, it is brown in color, the leaves are simple, the flowers are brightly colored, right? So what am I doing? I'm describing the external characteristics of, or I can say uh, that, so uh, I can say that I am five feet, four inches tall. You know, my black, my eyes are black in color, my hair is black in color, my skin is brown. So what am I saying? I'm describing the external characteristics. So when you describe the external characteristics of an organism, that is called as morphology. So D is also the wrong option. The right answer is histology is the study of tissues. Now you can all see these are the various kinds of tissues, the epithelial tissues and various tissues that you would have studied. So the study of tissues is called as histology, as we already know. Cytology is the study of cells. Embryology is the study of the development of an embryo and morphology is the study of the external structural features of an organism. So the right answer is histology is nothing but the study of tissues. That is the right answer. Now let us look at this question. The arrangement of tissues into a unit to perform a specific function is called as organism, organ, organ system or cellular system? Well, I'll give you a clue. Now, when you studied the animal kingdom, you studied the four different levels of organization. The first one, what was it? It was the cellular level of organization. What is cellular level of organization? As you saw in Porifera, a group of cells are performing the various functions. That is cellular level of organizations. When cells join together, to perform a common function, it is called as a tissue. Then we call it as a tissue level of organization. So from the cells, a group of cells forms what? It forms a tissue. And a group of tissues join together to form an organ. For example, let's say the heart. The heart has the cardiac cell, the cardiac muscle, right? And of course, the organ itself, which is the heart. So organ level or the organ is the next level. So you have the organ or the organ system. Of course, you're looking at the body organization. But I'm telling you how this, you know, the develop, uh, what do you say, how this upgrades from cell to tissue to organ and finally to the organism. Now, when you look at our, the human body, you know, it's very easy for you to understand that. Now, you've heard of, we know that we have the reproductive system or the respiratory system, the excretory system, the circulatory system, the nervous system. Systems. Now, what are systems? System is nothing but a group of organs along with maybe some blood vessels or certain, you know, structures and with certain chemical reactions, they are performing a particular function. So, the circulatory function, the flow of blood from the body to the heart, from the heart to the body is the circulatory system. What does it involve? It invo involves the heart, it involves the arteries, the veins, the lungs, the tissues, the body itself. So that is called as an organ system. 
Okay, so can you see this, how it is from cellular to tissue, organ to organ system. So here the question is, the arrangement of tissues into a unit to perform a specific function. What is it called? Is it the organism? No. Is it organ? Yes, it is an organ. Is it organ system? Definitely no. Is it cellular system? No. Why did we say it is not an organism? Now I am an organism, you are an organism. We are made up of organ systems, right? A number of organ system is what constitutes the organism. So organism is wrong. You can see how the, you can see the level of organization, cell, tissue, the tissues form the organ, organ form the organ system, and finally the organism. An organ consists of tissues organized in a specific proportion and pattern to perform specialized functions such as the lungs, stomach, kidneys, etc. Two or more organs that perform a common function by their physical and or chemical interaction form an organ system such as the digestive system, the respiratory system. Multiple organ systems that coordinate with each other for the survival of the individual form an organism. This is known as division of labor. Cellular system is an organization of components of cells to form various functions. So the right answer, a group of tissues joined together to form an organ. Now let us look at this question. Which of the following epithelial cells can be ciliated? What do you mean by cilia? Small hair-like structure. So if I have a cell here, let's say this is a cell. You have small hair-like structures like this. This is called as a cilia. Okay, singular is cilium, plural is cilia. So which among the following epithelial cells can be ciliated? Is it squamous epithelium, cuboidal epithelium, columnar epithelium or both B and C? Well, children, I'm sure all of you know the answer already. It is not squamous epithelium. Cuboidal epithelium. Now, this is cuboidal epithelium and columnar epithelium is column-like, pillar-like. Okay, now these are columnar epithelial cells. Now, both cuboidal and columnar epithelial cells can have cilia. The function of cilia is basically to direct the particles in one particular movement. You will find them lining fallopian tubes or you can also find them in the bronchioles. Now fallopian tube is basically to push the ovum that is released right from the ovaries in you know to through the tube into the uterus. So that is in one direction. Now bronchioles also the respiratory tract you cannot afford to have any dust particle getting into your alveola. It will not allow the cilia pushes it out. Right? The mucus, everything, it binds it and pushes it out. So, the correct answer is both B and C because it is found in both cuboidal as well as columnar. You can see ciliated epithelial cell and this is, of course, the squamous uh, cells, the squamous epithelial tissue. Columnar or cuboidal cells that have cilia on their surface are called ciliated epithelial cells. The cilia moves particles or mucus in a particular direction over the epithelium. This is seen in the inner surface of bronchioles and fallopian tubes. So the right answer, both columnar as well as ciliated, both columnar as well as cuboidal epithelium have cilia. So they're called as ciliated epithelial cells. This is the right answer, D, with both option B and C. Let us now look at this interesting question. You need to identify the incorrect, remember children, it is the incorrect statement about epithelial tissues, which is the wrong statement. So let's look at the first statement. The free surface faces the body fluid or the outside, or the outside em, uh, environment. Yes, this is correct. The epithelial tissues, in fact, they, you know, they line uh, an organ, They so they either face the external environment or the body fluid. So this is right, but then we need to select the incorrect statement. So we have to mark it as wrong. Cells are compactly packed with little, little intercellular spaces. Yes, this is also correct. But then we don't take it as the right answer because we need the incorrect statement. Compound epithelium plays a major role in secretion and absorption. No, this is incorrect. What do you mean by compound epithelium? There is more than one layer. They are stratified. That means they are layered. And layered epithelial cells do not play a role in absorption and secretion. It, in fact, it is simple epithelial cells. Okay. Now, compound epithelium, in fact, 
gives support because of the fact that they are multiple layers. So this is the incorrect statement. So obviously it is our incorrect answer, which is what we need. That's the right option. They have specialized cell junctions. Oh yes, cell junctions are present like, you know, adherence junction, tight junctions, cap junctions. These are junctions between cells to perform various functions and, you know, structural uh, properties of the cells are due to these uh, junctions. This is correct, but we have to mark it wrong because it's not an incorrect statement. So the right answer is C, where compound epithelium plays a major role in secretion and absorption. So you can see the stratified epithelium, I told you, compound is stratified. That means they are layered, whereas this is just one layer, simple epithelium. And these are the different types of junctions that exist between the cells. Compound epithelium is made up of multiple layers of cells and hence does not perform secretory or absorptive functions. Its main function is to provide protection against chemical and mechanical stresses. It is present on the dry surface of skin, moist surface of the buccal cavity, etc. The free surface of the epithelial tissue faces either a body fluid or the outside environment. Hence, it provides a lining for some parts of the body. The cells are compactly arranged with very little intercellular matrix. Cell, specialized cell junctions provide structural and functional links between adjacent cells. So the incorrect statement, which is the right option, is compound epithelium plays a major role in secretion and absorption. That is incorrect, but then here it is the option that we select. So that's the answer. Now let us look at this question. Which one of the following pairs of structures distinguishes a nerve cell from other types of cell. Now, what is a nerve cell? Nothing but the neuron. Fundamental unit of what? The nervous system, right? Now, this nerve cell or the neuron is very extremely important because all impulses, you know, either reach, it reaches the nerve cell, the neuron, and from the neuron, it goes to the other nerve cell. So, impulses that are basically important for the coordination of the various functions in an organism body. The impulses are transmitted through these nerve cells and neurons. Okay, so now we need to see which one of the following pairs of structures distinguishes, that means differentiates a nerve cell from other types of cells. So let's look at it. Flagellum and medullary sheath. Now flagellum, the whip-like structure, basically, which helps in, uh, you find it in bacteria, it can help in locomotion, right? That, you do not find it in a nerve cell. Medullary sheath, of course, you do find a sheath called as the myelin sheath, the myelin sheath which covers the nerve. So this is wrong. Nucleus and mitochondria, these are organelles which you do find in all eukaryotic cells, but this does not distinguish the neuron from the other cells. So, this is wrong. Perikaryon and dendrites. Well, I'm going to show you a picture of the neuron for you to understand. Now, can you see this? This is the nerve cell. Now, this region, this is the cellular part which is called as the cyton or the perikaryon. You can see it has a nucleus. The cytoplasm is called as a neuroplasm. Now, what do you see around it? These branch-like structures are called as dendrites. Now, dendrites are nothing but the structures, the outgrowths through which impulses reach the neuron from other neurons. Okay? So, these bring in the impulses and from the cyton, the impulses are transmitted through this long extension that you see. This is called as the axon. Okay? So, you have afferent and efferent processes, you know, dendrites which bring in the impulses and the axon which carries the impulses out. And if you see carefully, you can see the myelin sheath. This is what I was talking about. Myelin sheath is necessary so that there is no leakage of the impulses out of the neurons. Okay. So this, you do not find it in all the other cells. This is exclusively found in the neuron. So perikaryon and Dendrites, yes, this is right. Vacuoles and fibers, vacuoles. Now, vacuoles, you very commonly find it in plant cells and animal cells. It could be small or insignificant. It will be absent at times. Fibers, now, microfibrils, right? You've seen microfibrils that you uh, make up the cytoskeleton of the cell. In the neuron, you have something called as neurofibrils. 
but this is not what distinguishes the neuron from the other cells. It is the perikaryon and the dendrites. And as I showed you, this is the diagram of the picture of a nerve cell or the neuron. Nerve cells have a cell body called as a cyton or the perikaryon. Dendrites and the axon arise from the perikaryon. Dendrites are short branch processes that receive impulses from an adjacent neuron and transfer it to the cyton, the apparent processes. Whereas the axon is single, long process that conducts impulses from the cyton to the adjacent neuron, efferent processes. I told you, apparent and efferent. The cytoplasm of the neuron is called neuroplasm, which contains a large prominent nucleus, cell organelles such as mitochondria. It also contains fine fibers called as neurofibrils that play a role in the transport of various substances within the neuroplasm. The axons of some neurons are covered with a sheath called as the medullary sheath or the myelin sheath, which prevents the leakage of impulses from the neuron. Neurons are devoid, that means they do not have flagella and vacuoles. So the right answer, what distinguishes a nerve cell from other cells is the perikaryon and the dendrites among the options that we saw. That is the right answer.